Hi, this is Sean from Soundcraft, here with another installment of our UI series tutorials. Now we're on chapter six, where we're going to be discussing our Digitech AMP modeling, our DBX automatic feedback suppression, and our Lexkin effects. So then finally, we have the Lexkin effects. So the Lexkin effects, I'm just going to go to channel one, for instance, uh, and go to the effects sense page. So you have the effects sense, which Elliot already covered. This is how you uh, mix to an effects bus. So when I'm in the channel view, that's a channel centric send, which means that I can send that channel to multiple buses. In this case, the reverb bus, the delay bus, and the chorus. Um, and then when I'm in effects ends up here, this is that, that bus centric view. So this is sending all the cha individual channels into that effects bus. So into that reverb, into that delay, or into that chorus. So, um, so let's go back into the, into the edit page and let's talk about more about the actual reverbs, delays, and courses themselves. So I'm on a UI 12 here. So that means I have one reverb, one delay, and one chorus bus. So on a UI 16, you would have one additional bus. You'd have, uh, it would be a reverb or a delay depending on what you set it to. So here I have a reverb. We have tons of presets in here. So, you know, large halls, um, medium halls, small rooms, plate reverbs. Uh, cathedral kind of stuff. Uh, so you can use the presets, but what if you want to do your own kind of sound design and your own kind of settings for the reverb? So let me go into what these things are. So if I click reverb here, it'll uh, refresh that. If I click delay, it'll show you the delay settings there. Look at chorus, it'll show you the chorus settings. So let's start with the reverb. So again, you can select a preset or you can set your own parameters. So let me explain what each of these are. The time is the rever reverberation tail. So this is like the decay of the reverb. So it, a larger number will make it sound much bigger because it'll have a longer decay tail. Whereas when I bring this down, it'll make it'll sound like a smaller uh, kind of space. So watch, if you see I have large space that was set really high. If I set it to like a, a medium hall, for instance, uh, see it's much smaller now. Then you have high frequency damping. So Reverbs are tricky. Uh, basically, in, in a real natural space, what happens is that the high frequencies kind of get dampened because uh, because they have shorter wavelengths. They they don't kind of spread as much as lower frequency waves. They they have a lot more energy. They and they have longer wavelengths, so they tend to uh, kind of stand up for, to further distances. This is also why when we we're very far away from something, we tend to hear the low frequencies first, and then as you get closer, you hear the high frequencies. So what the damping does is is the amount of high frequency that you're that you're kind of squashing, lowering to make it sound like a more natural reverb. So that's a kind of a tricky thing to set. You really need to use your ears to kind of set that really well or use the presets. Then you have bass gain. So what the bass gain does is basically uh, these reverb algorithms, what tends to happen is sometimes the bass gets a bit weakened um, in, in the algorithms because the low frequency energy, it just sounds like mud. So what they do is they, they kind of get rid of some of the bass so it gets cleaner, but you can add that bass back in uh, afterwards, and that's what that control does. Um, then finally, you have the low-pass filter. So the low-pass filter basically just cuts out high-frequency uh, content from the reverb. The reason why this might be good is because, again, kind of like with what I was saying with the high-frequency dampening, if you have a lot of high frequencies in your reverb, it doesn't sound very natural. So, you know, you could play around with this. So if we find, if we go to the large space, for instance, ah, see it's on 22 kilohertz, but if I go to close up, for instance, this will be a bit lower because because the sound closer in, it'll be, it, it's a trick of frequencies that you can do. You can kind of low pass something, makes it sound a bit closer to you. And then finally you have the high pass filter, which is the, obviously the opposite of the low pass filter. So if you raise this, it gets rid of the low frequency information uh, on your reverb. I quite like to set, uh, pretty aggressive high pass filters on reverbs because it just gets very muddy if you have a lot of low end in your uh, in your reverbs and stuff like that. So that's the Lexkin reverbs. Then we have the delays. So again, same kind of thing with the delays. First of all, you have a tap tempo here. If you wanna do a, a tap kind of thing, you see the BPM changing. You also have that here if you wanted to do that. And then you can also press and hold this and just enter a BPM if you want. Good old 120 for instance. There you go. So now that's in. But let me go back to, to the delay. So again, you have a tons of uh, delays here. Um, both You can make your own presets as well, or you can use the factory uh, presets, like a basic slap delay, for instance. But again, if you wanted to set your own uh, sort of delays, here's how you could do that, because you have controls for that. So I already showed you how to tap the tempo. Pretty handy uh, to really sync up with what the band is doing. 
but you also have manual uh, time uh, delay lengths as well. So you can do it based on milliseconds or you can do it based on length uh, subdivisions. So, you know, if you can do it in three eighths or, or one third uh, triplets, you know, you could do quarter notes, so on and so forth. Um, and that would just be a, divi uh, a division of the, of the beats per minute. Then you have the feedback amount. So the feedback amount, basically, it controls the number of delay repeats. Uh, so it creates, you know, a series of repeats which, with the, which are each slightly lower than the previous repeat, and that's what gives it the delay, something like ah, uh, 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 or something like that. So basically the feedback percentage is how many times you want it to repeat and how much attenuation there is after each repeat. So obviously 100% would be very, you know, almost infinitely long, and a, an amount lower is a bit more natural. Then similar to the reverb, we have a low pass filter. So the low pass filter just, again, cuts the high frequencies, uh, which can help uh, kind of clear up the mix and, and it makes it sound more distant too. The more aggressive you are with the low pass filter, the more distant it will sound, the, the repeats themselves. So that's a good way to use that. Finally, you have the chorus. So the chorus is uh, simple in terms, it only has three controls. Um, again, you have tons of presets, so, you know, Alien Encounter, which makes it sound really crazy to a slight sense of ambience, really wide stereo uh, chorus, play around, see which which one of the presets might work for you. But it, again, if you wanted to make your own, here's what the, the settings do. So what the detune does is um, uh, basically with a chorus, you have, it, you have the original signal that comes into the chorus and then it duplicates it, which is why it's called chorus. And then it applies a slight detune. And what the detune does is it makes it sound fatter because it's a little bit, uh, it creates like phase effects and stuff like that. And it makes the, the signal sound bigger uh, and, and wider, you know, stereo wise. Then you have the density. So the density uh, just like kind of just, it's how much you layer, how much, how much the chorus algorithm layers uh, other uh, duplicate signals to it. So the higher the density, you know, the more layers you have on it and it's going to sound very thick a very wide stereo image and, and very dense frequency content wise. And if you lower it, it'll just be a, a bit of a sheen rather than drowning it in chorus. And then again, just like the reverb and the delay, you have a low pass filter. Uh, you know, you might want to use this to again, clean it up or make it sound uh, not so dense uh, in the mix. So those are the lexicon effects uh, and, and that's how you can use them and use their presets and also customize them. And of course, use the effect sends on a channel centric basis or a bus centric basis. So that wraps up this series of the UI tutorials. We discussed the Digitech AMP modeling, the DBX AFS and the Lexicon AFX. Check back for more videos and happy mixing.